So recently I had a personal project for creating a VR environment. And I made a cabin and I created a bunch of props. And one of the things that I had 3D modeled was a mug. And I remembered this scene in Wolfenstein, The New Order, and I thought about, I was like, that liquid effect looks really cool. And it also is very simple. And I think it's also very effective. So I wanted to try and replicate it myself. And this is what I came up with. So the mug is comprised of two parts, the mug, obviously, and the liquid. What I've done though, is I childed, childed the liquid mesh to an empty game object. And I did that so when I'm rotating it as well as having it move along with the mug, it's easier for me to do the rotations. And you'll see a little bit more of that in a bit. So taking a quick look at the script, we have a few game objects up top for the liquid object as well as the mesh and a few values for the speed as well as the difference that we're going to be using for clamping the rotation. Within the update, we're going to be calling the slosh method as well as doing the rotation for the liquid mesh. And that's the childhood object that is attached to the empty game object that I talked about earlier. For the liquid mesh rotation, it's relatively self-explanatory. We're just using the rotate function of the transform to slowly rotate the object over time. And here's a quick example of that rotation in action. It's very exciting, I know. So now we're gonna go back and look at the slosh method where we're gonna be taking the inverse rotation of the mug itself. And we'll be taking the local rotation of the mug. We'll be then using the quaternion rotate towards using the local rotation of the liquid as well as the inverse rotation that we just created. And then we'll be getting the Euler angles of that. We'll be then storing that Euler angle in final rotation. And then we'll be clamping those rotations so as you're tipping the mug, the internal mesh isn't flying all over the place. And then once we've clamped those values, we're actually going to be applying it to the local Euler angles of the liquid itself. So before moving on to the clamp rotation method, um, I also created a more slosh method for when the liquid would hit the clamp value. And it would sort of create a bit of a ping pong animation. However, once I started trying it out in VR, it didn't work out. So I'm gonna leave that out for now. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our clamp rotation method where we are actually clamping the local rotation values. And since we're working in local rotation, we're always gonna get a value between zero and 360. So here, if the value is above 180, I am simply subtracting the difference from 360, meaning in this case, our difference is 25. So we're gonna be clamping between 335 and 360. But if it's less than that, we're gonna be clamping between zero and 25. Here we can see the effect much closer. And as I turn the mug into the left and to the right, you can see that the liquid takes the inverse rotation of the mug, but also stays within the clamped values that we established. And that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.